Hi, I'm Bree Murphy. I'm Oberon's National Applications Engineer. And today we're going to talk about outdoor wireless. So Wi-Fi is everywhere, and I think everyone agrees with that. Now let's take a look at some predictions and statistics. Let me first share with you a pretty significant and compelling document. It's Cisco's Visual Networking Index. They publish this report every year. This is a white paper that represents the details of the global IP traffic forecast and the mythology behind it. They research and publish statistics on global fixed and mobile traffic projections and internet trends. This is an extraordinary document that helps billions of people plan today for future technology demands. So here are some interesting facts according to their 2017 report. Global mobile data usage is growing at 67% compound annual growth rate. It's pretty significant. And 50% of the traffic will be delivered over a Wi-Fi infrastructure. And according to this report, the fastest growing segment is smartphones. Of course, right? There isn't much that you can't do with a smartphone. And as with data traffic, a lot of voice traffic is moving on to the Wi-Fi networks, especially within and around buildings. This is called voice over Wi-Fi. In fact, 53% of mobile voice will be transmitted over the Wi-Fi infrastructure by 2020, according to the VNI forecast. Since 80% of mobile calls are originated in or destined to a building, it makes sense that a lot of the voice traffic can be handled over the Wi-Fi network. It is very easy to switch your smartphones to prioritize calling over your home or office Wi-Fi network. In fact, many carriers are automatically switching your phones to Wi-Fi in an effort to free up the voice LTE space. How will this impact the Wi-Fi infrastructures as this technology method continues to cultivate? More APs perhaps? Maybe the need for more FCC channels? How about the positioning of the access points? Well, let's take a look at the future of voice over Wi-Fi with this chart from Cisco. As you can see, the voice technologies are all growing. And starting last year, predictions are showing a transition with voice that shows an upward shift towards voice over Wi-Fi. So while designing Wi-Fi networks now, there is a great consideration for ubiquitous coverage for both data and voice, where there used to be just a large focus on data. If you get a disruption in your voice call while using Wi-Fi, you'll definitely notice it. Unlike data disruption may just slow down. Many institutions that need reliability will take into consideration the planning and design for all traffic that could move on to that Wi-Fi network. So in the first slide, we talked about the significant growth in mobile traffic. It's growing at 67% compound annual growth rate. How will this growth in mobile traffic be accommodated? It's going to take a lot of bandwidth and the best wireless design for capacity. This means exploiting the 500 megahertz of bandwidth available in the five gigahertz band. Presently, we use 25, 20 megahertz channels, as you can see with the blue bars, with the potential for 12 more in the future as seen with the red bars. You can see just how much more bandwidth is available in the 5 GHz band versus the 2.4 GHz ISM band. It is clearly a necessity to use 5 GHz channels because there's more bandwidth to handle the compound annual growth rate of data and voice. On another note is that voice needs greater AP density because voice requires a higher signal to noise ratio than data at the client device. 
therefore requiring a lot more APs and bandwidth. Okay, so what about Wi-Fi outdoors? As more data and voice traffic is carried over the Wi-Fi network, it is time to start thinking about extending the Wi-Fi capability outdoors. Since most of the bandwidth is in the 5 gigahertz band, certainly this is where most of the planning should be. At one time, certain portions of the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band were restricted to indoor use only, but this is no longer true. Additionally, in the past there were concerns of APs interfering with terminal Doppler weather radar systems near airports, but new APs have dynamic frequency selection, DFS, which sense for these weather radar systems and avoid transmitting in their occupied bands. However, 5 gigahertz cells are naturally smaller than 2.4 gigahertz cells because the free space propagation loss is higher at 5 gigahertz than it is at 2.4 gigahertz. So the designer really needs to think about where to locate the APs to get the best capacity and coverage, especially outdoors. So in the past, Wi-Fi networks were designed for access points to provide the greatest coverage in the area. This was particularly true for outdoor networks. Sometimes the AP was mounted on the rooftop of a building or maybe high up on the building walls or high up on utility poles. But now, as mentioned earlier, Wi-Fi networks are designed for capacity using a higher density of APs. So now the designer is faced with thinking about smaller cells and larger number of access points and positioning them closer to where the client devices are. So these conventional methods mentioned on this slide may not be acceptable from a performance standpoint, maybe from a, an aesthetic standpoint, or even a maintenance perspective. As you mount antennas on top of buildings, does that rooftop connection provide the best coverage for today's demands? Well, from a physical perspective, maintenance could be a concern, perhaps lightning strikes, or having to pay for additional high-end equipment to, to protect the AP from catastrophes. But on another important note, the cell of coverage is small so client devices may have a difficult time connecting to that rooftop AP. So they might attempt to connect to whatever nearby APs that they hear, quote unquote, which could be the interior Wi-Fi network. So this could create problems for the client device and for the interior Wi-Fi network. Remember we talked about the signal to noise for voice? The channels are smaller, and more APs are required. Now imagine this most likely scenario with a large number of people with their smartphones connecting to the Wi-Fi network as they move in and out of the buildings. The client devices are likely to hear APs from throughout the building and may try to associate with those indoor APs rather than the rooftop AP. This could be disruptive to the indoor network and could lead also to a poor experience for the smartphone user. So to create a reliable and disruptive network, there are several design objectives to consider. Keeping in mind that five gigahertz cells are smaller and the design is for capacity, not coverage, the APs will need to be closer to where the client devices are located. This means mounting the APs where the traffic is, at building entrances, bus stops, busy walkways, campus green spaces, and more. And mounting them where the traffic is will minimize the impact of the outdoor client devices on the indoor network. So mounting the APs reasonably close to the ground where the client devices are would actually be ideal. Now that we've talked about placement of the APs, there are also connectivity components to consider. 
If we look at the big picture, the outdoor Wi-Fi location will require an AP, of course, suitable for outdoor use, with antenna and cables, and of course, other network connectivity, perhaps maybe even an outdoor rated switch. So I thought I would mention as part of the connectivity for Wi-Fi access points is to deliver data and power to the outdoor location. A few of the outside plant cables could include multi-mode OM3 fiber, which has a range of 80 meters for one gig, or 300 meters for 10 gig if you're using 10 gig. There's also OM4 fiber, which can reach 400 meters for 10 gig, or single mode, which can deliver a range out to 40 kilometers. And of course, there are hybrid cables on the market. In either case, using fiber would require the need for a media converter as the input for the APs or copper. There are some extended range copper fiber hybrids on the market as well, and I'll let you contact your vendor for details on that. But note that all of the components, of course, would need to have a temperature range suitable for the outdoor environment. And many people refer to the TIA 758-B for outside plant standards. Also, just as important is the housing of the APs and the protection. And also very important is the serviceability of the AP and the connectivity components since we're considering mounting them close to where the clients are. So now that we've discussed design objectives and connectivity for outdoor Wi-Fi, let's take a look at a few solutions. Pictured here are Wi-Fi bollards. They provide an ideal way to place APs and antennas, as well as cabling and connectivity close to the client devices in which they're serving. The Oberon NetPoint Wi-Fi bollard is comprised of a sturdy plastic cover, a permanent or temporary anchor base, a fiberglass mounting pole, and an interior equipment mounting pole, which is adjustable. This particular unit comes in various heights and so many colors. The access point, the cabling, and antenna are all protected from weather and tampering and in inconspicuous manner. This solution will also provide you with easy access for maintenance and upgrades. These are examples of Oberon's net post, which is a heavy duty fiberglass Wi-Fi bollard. Net post is comprised of a heavy duty fiberglass cover, a heavy permanent anchor base, fiberglass mounting pole, and an adjustable interior equipment mounting pole. NetPost is a very robust and durable solution designed for open public areas like parks and bus stations where it might be subject to abuse and vandalism. This unit stands at 54 inches tall and comes in three colors, black, gray, and bronze. Here we have bollards strategically placed to provide acceptable coverage and bandwidth at the client level therefore helping to eliminate disruption to the indoor Wi-Fi network. For mounting access points on building walls, here is a solution that conceals the AP, also the antenna and cabling, and protects the equipment from tampering and weather. This is over on Skybar Wi-Fi enclosure, which is large enough for most vendors' outdoor APs and MIMO antennas. The Sky Bar is an attractive low profile unit with a screw on lid, which is virtually transparent to the wireless signal. And it's paintable so it can be blended into any environment and building. And it's NEMA 4 rated. For mounting on light poles, the AP antenna can be mounted in a Sky Bar enclosure to conceal and protect the AP, antenna, cables, and connectors. Overall, Oberon's 1021 model is a low profile mount with pole mount kit and vanity cover to fit a variety of light poles and helps to improve the overall appearance of the installation. This unit is also NEMA 4 rated and it is paintable so that it may be color matched to the light pole. 
Oberon's 1020 series sky bar NEMA 4 enclosure is designed to protect APs and antennas in under seat applications in both indoor or outdoor sports or entertainment venues. On the right side of the slide is the same unit but with a right angle bracket so that you can keep the AP mounted in the preferred horizontal position in areas in which you need that. This is a nice low profile design, large enough for most vendors, APs and antennas. So as you plan for the outdoor Wi-Fi network, there really isn't a cookie cutter solution for network optimization. Different applications will have different requirements for using the channels and the frequencies, for using different antennas, as well as placement of the APs. Oberon has the experience, the knowledge, and the innovative products to assist you with any Wi-Fi installation. Thank you.